Last week, I obtained one of the riskiest items that is possible to go for on a hardcore Iron Man. And it was an insanely fun grind. It was really scary, but there was constant adrenaline and it was really enjoyable at the same time. This got me thinking, maybe I should mix up how I'm playing a little bit and take a little bit of a detour for my original goals. In case some of you guys haven't already guessed, yes, that means that this week I will be attempting to get my first kill count at the Theater of Blood. Now I know that these were my original goals on screen right now before I actually dove into the Theater of Blood, but I'm deciding to mix them up just slightly. Now although the gear isn't exactly what I wanted to have before I start the Theater of Blood, there is only one item that I'm going to be going for, and that item is the Avernic Defender Hilt. It makes a lot of sense for me to try and get this item before trying to grind out the Tebow, because the Avernic Hilt is going to be a pretty big increase to my melee DPS, and is going to be used at a lot of places. So it really just makes sense for me to try and go for it as early as possible. Unlike the Chambers of Zarek, the Theater of Blood is actually a risked death, making it the riskiest PVM activity to do on a hardcore Iron Man. The goal for this week is to get one kill count. There's a couple grinds I have to do before I can actually get into the theater on this account to make my DPS a little bit better, so I'm going to make sure to do those grinds first. There's still going to be some other content mixed in, just to keep myself and my stream entertained so that I'm not just doing skilling and boring content on my live stream. Let's just jump right into this, and hopefully we don't die getting our first kill count. See you guys on the other side. In case you guys have forgotten, I'm actually going to be maxing my regular Iron Man. Now at the time of this video's release, I'm going to be maxing later that day. So Sunday, August 18th at 3pm Eastern Standard Time. There's going to be lots of giveaways, lots of fun activities that involve giveaways and clue scrolls that we made custom to try and give everybody a chance at winning some money, as well as concluding with an Elijah Spirit Shield giveaway. Now all of my friends have actually come over to my house, and at the time of you seeing this, they should already be here, and we're doing tons of land stuff, including this stream, so I hope you guys decide to come check it out, show some love, and maybe get a chance at winning some pretty fantastic items. Now let's jump into the video. I was hoping to maybe pick up tacits so that I could wear a tankier setup in the Theater of Blood, but you know what? I'll take my 11th Godsword Shard 1. This is just as useful. One of the first steps I have to do in order to get to the Theater of Blood is actually the quests to be able to get the necklace. Now, I don't need the necklace to teleport there. I'm pretty sure I can just get there via a dock north of the Ectophantus, but I might as well do these quests. I've been putting them off for a long time, and they're not as bad as I remember. So, Darkness of Hollow Veil done, you know, a little bit more than 30 minutes. Not that bad of a quest. There we go, the A Taste of Hope quest completed. Pretty fast as well, honestly. Gonna dunk all these onto runecrafting because, you know, free runecrafting XP, <laughs> why not, I guess. I now have access to the Dragon's Medallion and a fast teleport to getting to the Theater of Blood, so I guess whenever I'm ready to start doing it, I can start doing it. There is actually one more thing I want to do before I enter the Theater of Blood, besides trembling in fear, and that is I want to actually work on my smithing. Now you're probably wondering, how is this relevant? Well, I want to be able to get up to 89 smithing to be able to make rune dart tips. Now, this isn't completely necessary by any means, but I want to at least feel like my team isn't completely carrying me, and even though I don't have a scythe and all of my friends are going to be on their mains that do have scythes, I still feel like it would it'd be nice, and it's something that's going to help me in chambers as well. It's a very large upgrade, and hopefully I'll be able to actually get some of the rune ore drops while doing theater, in addition to the ones I have in my bank, to be able to provide myself enough rune darts to sustain while doing chambers and theater. First level of many coming in right here. 81 smithing, which gives us access to some useless stuff. Now, I know that I don't actually have the gold ore to get all the way up to 89, or even 88 for that matter. And honestly, I don't think I want to spend a ton of GP buying tons of gold ore, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I do technically have all of the XP I need banked, but, uh, you know, I have 24,000 mithril ore, and I'd have to use at least, I think, like 14,000 of that if I wanted to get where I want to be. So I'll have to figure that out. I'm not sure if that's something I want to do. Second level of the day right there, 82 smithing, and the third level of the day, 83 smithing, and I'm pretty much out of gold ore now. Come on, man. There it is. 99 attack, 
123 combat still. I actually expected to go up there. That's kind of weird. I guess I have to train my prayer a little bit. But that is max melee stats done on the hardcore. So now instead of AFKing NMZ, I gotta find something else to do. I'll probably go back to AFKing woodcutting until I'm like 87, just so that I can use my dragon axe for that master step. And then maybe put that dragon pickaxe to good use and start doing some mining. Well, I've already smithed all of my adamant ore, but 84 smithing coming in while I'm starting on the mithril. We are just one level off of being able to make rune, but I think it's recording, so two plus one, go for it, Kurt. Give me Not a scroll. No! Fuck! <laughs> it's always a scroll! Arcane! It's always Dork. a scroll every time! And our last, like, 15 drops are just scrolls! 85 smithing, uh, which is obviously a very iconic level for Runite and of course the sigil that I'll probably never have. But I only have I think about 5,000 or so mithril left to make and then we can start making some plate bodies. Finally done smithing all the bars or smelting all the bars at Blast Furnace and we are now making all of the things here at the anvil. I will be here for a while. Luckily only two more levels to go but I have to make like 3,000 mithril plate bodies, and then go through 2,000 adamant bars into dart tips as well. It appears I have miscalculated. I know I didn't record 87 smithing, I was, I was doing it on mobile. But uh, I have 62k XP, and I'm out of mithril bars now. I think what happened was, because I know I made some extra mithril bars, I think that I accidentally calculated the actual XP that I was going to get for smithing the runite bars, not just for smelting them. So I'm gonna go, this time I'm okay with buying some gold ore. It's only like a thousand, a little over a thousand, so it's not that bad. Go get that knocked out real quick. And there we go, 88 smithing. Now obviously you're not gonna see right here, it's not gonna tell you that I am able to make rune darts, but assuming that I didn't forget the level, yeah, it's 89. All right, so I'm gonna go buy some dwarven stouts. I think I know the best place to buy them. And then we're gonna start making some rune dart tips. All right, yeah, this is definitely the best place. So if you go to the basement of the Berthorpe Games room, you can buy these at what looks like 12 per world. And as you see, when you drink them, you do gain one smithing level, which is all that I need. With preserve and everything, I should be able to... Yeah, that's a nice option that they have there. With preserve and everything, I should be able to get this done pretty quickly. There we go. I had to go through a lot of dwarven stouts, but honestly, it's still way faster than getting the actual level would have been. And we have 14,000 rune dart tips. I think I still have some from when I was doing Vork. Yes, we have a couple more in the bank as well. And tons of adamant dart tips. So we should never be running out of those anymore either. So now I just have to buy some feathers and actually make these things. And then I think I just need to do some more TOB practice and I'm ready to risk my entire account for a stupid defender upgrade. All right, I missed it. I did get a fletching level. I still have to finish up the rest of these rune darts, but I got up to 84 fletching, so free level out of doing this. Very nice. All right, there we go. All the darts are made. 14,613 rune darts should hopefully last me a very long time. And this is really good not just for theater, but also for chambers, because it's going to be a pretty big DPS increase since the way my friends and I do chambers. We use the blowpipe a decent bit, so that'll be pretty nice. Now, my regular Iron Man has over 700 kill count at the Theater of Blood, so I'm no stranger to it. That being said... It's been six months to a year since I've done it, so it's probably a pretty good idea for me to get some practice runs in before I actually go in on my hardcore, just to avoid any mistakes. On screen now, you guys are going to see the gear that I plan on taking on my hardcore Iron Man, and I do my best to simulate this gear on my regular Iron Man, the only difference being that my regular Iron Man has an Infernal Cape and an Avernic Defender. This is a fairly conservative setup in that I have plenty of room for food, so I shouldn't really be experiencing too many problems. The empty spots in my inventory do get replaced by food, but I also use them to pre-pot before going inside the actual theater. The item in the bottom left of my inventory that a lot of you guys probably don't recognize is the Teleport Crystal. Now this is the only way of actually getting out of the Theater of Blood besides completing it or forfeiting in between boss rooms. They are very expensive, 75k each, but despite that, I'm not afraid to use them. If a situation presents itself that I feel like has the potential to kill me, I'm going to do my best to teleport out. Now unfortunately, a lot of the situations that you can die in in Theater of Blood are pretty instantaneous and don't really give you very much time to react. It's mostly just there if I feel like I'm lagging out, or if we have a really bad run and a bunch of people in my team die and we feel like we won't be able to complete a boss anymore. That being said, my friends are also very, very talented at the Theater of Blood, and they all have extremely high KCs because the 700 KC that I have, it was all obtained with them. So we're all fairly experienced. Hopefully there aren't any situations like that. Hopefully I don't lag. 
but you know, can't really control that. Now I'm not going to jump into every mechanic of every boss, but there are some situations that are definitely riskier than others, so I'm going to kind of highlight which bosses I think are riskier and which ones I feel like I'm more likely to die at. Now the first boss in the theater is the Maiden. Maiden, I honestly don't see myself dying as long as we control these blood spawns that come out and I don't stand in the wrong place. It's fairly simple to avoid most of this stuff, it just kind of comes down to paying attention. This boss, I feel like overall, is fairly safe, and unless I disconnect, which is a situation I'm not going to continue to mention in the future, I'm very unlikely to die here. The second boss, and arguably the scariest one, is the Pestilent Bloat, and I really think that this is the highest potential death opportunity for me right here. The reason for that is, things can go wrong very quickly, and you don't really have an insane amount of time to react to most situations. If multiple people in your team get caught out in the wrong position, you can die in just a couple of game ticks. On top of that, the falling hands do a lot of damage and stun you, so if I get hit by that, I'm basically going to teleport out instantly. During all of my 20-something practice runs on my regular Iron Man, this is the only boss that caused me to use my teleport crystal, and I actually used the teleport crystal twice here. The next and probably safest room aside from Maiden is the Nilo room. Now this room is pretty simple, there's not too much going on, and since I'm the mage role, I'm fairly safe. In all of my practice runs, I never actually dipped below 60 HP once, so I really don't see this room being too much of a problem unless I make a mistake on the final boss that appears, but at that point, it's on me, it really comes down to nerves, and I don't really anticipate that being a huge problem. This boss is where things get a little out of the norm. Now, normally at Sodaseg, you're either going to be mailing it with a scythe or a whip, or you're going to be standing at a distance with a T-bow. However, I'm standing at a distance with a blowpipe. The reason for that is, since all of my friends have scythes, there's no way that I out-DPS them and there's no way that I obtain the MVP. Like I mentioned, I'll go more into detail with how that works in the next video. But since I'm not going to obtain the MVP, there's no point in me putting myself at risk by standing in melee range with a whip and taking potentially tons of extra damage. The only place that does present opportunity at death here is this maze right here. A lot of you guys know this, and this maze is probably fairly infamous to most people doing the Theater of Blood because this is a very, very common point of wiping for newer players. I do, however, have very good faith in my friends, and honestly less faith in myself, to perform the maze properly, so there shouldn't be too many problems here. Once again, if I die on the maze, it's most likely due to my own mistake, as my friends don't mess up nearly as much as I probably will. Do I really need to explain Zarpus? If I die here, I'm just an idiot. Of course, there is finally... Verzik. Now Verzik, there is obviously a lot of opportunity for death in every phase. The main one that I'm actually worried about, believe it or not, is phase one. Now a lot of you guys know that several hardcores have been chanced and several hardcores have actually died to the pillars on phase one stacked out with a Verzik's mage attack. As long as I'm careful, this won't be a problem, but the main thing there is negligence or just getting too comfortable is where the situation of death kind of presents itself. Phase 2 is fairly safe, and Phase 3, there is a slight chance of dying if, once again, I'm not paying attention or if there are heavy mistakes made, but I'm playing that one pretty safe. Phase 3 is the other part that is a little bit risky, but I do play this one fairly safe by generally stepping out before the boss is actually going to be attacking, meaning that if a melee attack happens, it shouldn't hit me since I won't have been in melee range at the time of the attack happening. The riskiest part of phase 3 is of course the giant ball that does 74 damage to whoever it targets. Now since I'm going to be normally 4 manning, that means there's a 1 in 4 chance of it being on me, but that's why I keep a couple pieces of fish in my inventory to double eat if I have to. Before I jump into the first hardcore run though, we did get a few pieces of loot while I was warming up and practicing. This is what our 4th or 5th practice run, I'm just trying to get the hang of doing things. So far so good, I haven't died yet. Um, my friends are pretty much carrying me because they'll have scythes, so I mean, you know. <laughs> but we got our first drop, so let's see what it is. In before. <laughs> ah, yeah, bringing it back. Right bringing it back, Kurt. Last, like, full day of warming up when we see a second drop for Mr. Kurt. Let's see that scythe, Kurt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. my God, nice. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. That's actually beautiful, dude. I mean, all right. I'll take uh, I'll take some sure, GP. Man. I'll take some GP. Yeah. That's all right, dude. Free money. If you guys have made it this far into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe because that does really help my video get seen by more people. And now for the scary content.
three, two, one, go. God, I forgot how stressful music music is. Remember how I said I was wearing that jacket earlier? I have basically at this point sweat like clean through it. Hey, you're playing like a beta, you're using magic. <laughs> Someone's gonna say it, so I'm addressing this before it gets said. Betas but... live. Probably addressing it after, to be honest. Is it not mine? It is not. Okay. Grab me. I'm moving after this set, just in case. Glad I moved. Pretty sure it's mine. I have spec, I'll drop it after this. I'm assuming your spec's gonna kill it, so I'm gonna stand here like a big beta. Don't turn off your prey mage, alright? Like, I get that this is a safe tile, but don't be that confident, okay? Confidence is what's gonna kill you here. Don't go for first hit, don't go for first hit. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, huh? See that crab, and it's scaring me, so I'm just gonna go over here. I froze yeah. it, but okay. I'm running around like such a spastic. At least you're not like me, who literally ran through a boss fix it. <laughs> you came out okay, though. <laughs> Even dodged the fucking. Acid ball thing. David, it's very important for you to get a 1kc scythe, apparently. Okay. 1kc scythe and I give away a Tebow. Mm -hmm. Don't doubt me either, I have the money to do it. <laughs> Paid off mystery scythe. 1kc scythe and we all max right now. <laughs> Whoa. Wait, I haven't even gotten myself done with Prif yet. To the point of the final boss. That wouldn't be fair. <sighs> Fast again. Me. That was actually the first point of damage I've taken the entire Berserk fight. <laughs> nice. Oh. What is that about? <laughs> I got the freeze. I did not get the freeze. It's apparently splashed. Two more for limbs. Next one. Next one. Did you guys know that Mod Gi is the one that sings these vocals from Urzik? She's really talented. Nice. At least you haven't realized I joke a lot when I get nervous. <laughs> Watch DPS. That middle south? There's another one south. Just the one in the middle, Connor. Okay. Holy fuck, we bursted through this. I don't even have C specs. One. Two. Three. Four. This one's small. 
me. <sighs> All right. Hey, see you one, baby. <laughs> That's actually perfect. pretty pretty good time to be honest. <laughs> well, there it is. The goal is completed. My first kill count of hopefully very many to come at the theater of blood. A uh, quick apology because this is actually a highlight from my Twitch channel. This did happen live on stream, but I had to highlight it because my recorder derped out, and yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. But we managed to get through the whole theater blood. I didn't die. I'm still a hardcore. I get to live another day. So that is two back-to-back -back weeks of incredibly dangerous content. In the next episode, whenever that may be, as you can probably tell on the screen right now, I'm already going to be doing some more Theater of Blood. Now, I don't know if I'm going to limit the next episode to only coming out once I get my Defender, or just whenever I get my first purple, so basically the first item in my name. I'm not really sure. Now, the only thing that kind of sucks about not getting something on 1KC, specifically a Scythe, is that I missed an opportunity to have my good friend Guides for Us All name his second son after me. So, that's a little unfortunate. As you guys can expect, this was a pretty scary video to make, so if you enjoyed it, if you could leave a like and a comment on the video, that'd be awesome, and it would help my videos get seen by more people. As well as if you're new to my channel, if you could click that subscribe button as well as the bell to receive notifications, that'd be fantastic. Now, I know this video is coming out the same day as my friends and I maxing, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so you guys should definitely head over to the stream if you're watching this video when it first goes live, because the stream will start at roughly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and there's going to be a lot of fun stuff happening there. I want to take a brief second to tell you guys that the next couple weeks on my YouTube channel are going to be kind of hectic in terms that there are going to be a lot of uploads and a lot of non-RS uploads. Now, I know that to some of you guys that seems kind of weird, but like I mentioned, since my friends are coming over to kind of have a LAN party with me when we max, we're going to be doing tons of other stuff too, so I'm going to try and make a couple of vlogs out of that if that sounds interesting to you guys. I'd appreciate if you could check them out. And there's also going to be some WoW Classic content coming up in the coming weeks, because WoW Classic is something that I'm really, really excited for, and I've mentioned this before in my videos, but I know that not everybody is going to be super interested in it. If you are, however, I did already pick my server, and I'm going to be playing on the Harad server as an alliance character. So if you guys would like to join a guild, I would strongly recommend that you head over to the same server as me, because as of right now, that's where my friends and I plan on rolling. I've mentioned this before, but in the days before WoW Classic comes out, there's going to be a big announcement video regarding my channel, so keep your eyes out for that because it's really important that if you guys care about this channel or just the content on it, that you guys watch that and you know try to listen to everything that's going to be happening because there are going to be a lot of big changes. But obviously, as you guys can tell, I am still very interested in RuneScape, so don't worry, even if the uploads slow down because of where I'm at in the game on my hardcore, the uploads are never going to stop for RuneScape. RuneScape videos will still be happening on this channel, so don't worry about that. That all being said, sorry for the bit of a ramble at the end here, but I hope you guys all have a fantastic day, and hopefully I catch you guys all on the live stream. Peace out, everybody.